Welcome to Worlds Apart. Despite the unprecedented pace of scientific breakthroughs, humanity still seems to be as far away from the age of reason as ever. With religious extremism and political infantilism spreading around the globe, often aiding each other, has the idea of governance based on critical thinking already become a delusion? Well, to discuss that, I'm now joined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins. Mr. Dawkins, it's great to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Now, this is your first time in Russia yes. and in St. Petersburg, and this is a city that has long traditions of critical thinking, of secularism, but also a very energetic religious community which called for the cancellation of your visit. Did you have any second thoughts about coming here? No, I was not aware of any call for my cancellation. If I had been, I'd have been all the more determined to come. What is the reception that you has been receiving so far? Do people know about you in this country? I've had a magnificent reception, a huge crowd at the Geek Picnic, and then the gigantic book signing queue. I don't know how many books I signed, but it went on for nearly two hours. Now, you know, you come here at a time when the city is galvanized over the fate of its largest cathedral, which also ha happens to be the fourth largest cathedral in the world. And it has a very interesting history because back in the early Soviet times, it was turned into the Museum of Atheism. There was even a Foucault pendulum there to install to demonstrate Copernicus ideas, but now the church wants it back. And I wonder if that really demonstrates that the, neither atheism nor religion can ever decisively win this battle for hearts and minds in a way your own cause will never be, will be fully realized. I look forward to seeing the cathedral very much. I love seeing cathedrals. Um, I don't want to enter into any local political disputes. Um, but local is global this, uh, these days, if, if you speak about the value of I critical thinking. I want to see religion die. I mean, I, I despise all religion. On the other hand, a beautiful cathedral is a beautiful cathedral. And uh, I, I value the artistic contribution that religion has made over the centuries. But. Uh, don't you think that uh, despite all your efforts to popularize critical thinking, to popularize atheism, religion seems to be having some sort of a comeback, not only in this country, but also around the world? Well, give us a few more decades. Um, in America, for example, which is one of the most religious countries in the Western world, it's, it's, we're, we're winning. I mean, the, the number of religious people is, is going down. I'm aware that there's a bit of a backlash in Russia. I take it that that's a backlash against the communist regime rather than against atheism per se. And it, it's because atheism was the of official state doctrine under communist rule. I could easily imagine that people would rebel against that because they're rebelling against, against the op oppression of communism. I know that when uh, believers want to rebuff your intellectual attacks on religion, they often bring up communism or Stalinism as an example of atheism growing, going wrong. And I know that you always refuse to blame atheism for the excesses of communism. Why? It's ludicrous to blame atheism for the excesses of communism. It's nothing to do with it. You might as well blame moustaches because Stalin and Hitler bo both had moustaches. Um, atheism has absolutely nothing to do with the excesses of communism. Well, it's interesting you say that because, um, you know, Stalin in particular was an interesting person because he, in his early years, he was trained to be a priest. And there are still doubts whether he fully abandoned those beliefs because Indeed. later in his yeah. life he was protective of certain religious hallmarks. So I wonder if um, one person can really combine uh, both uh, the belief in, let's say, either atheism or at least critical thinking and scientific way, uh, way of development and some sort of superstition. Well, Stalin may have done that. I mean, Stalin was one of the most evil people who have ever lived, and so I wouldn't want to hold him up as an example of anything. Uh, um, he clearly was just doing bad things for all, for all sorts of qu queer reasons. Um, whether or not Stalin was, was an atheist, you cannot blame atheism for Stalin. Now, if you study the early Soviet history, it wasn't only about atheism, it was also about scientism, this belief that science will dramatically change the makeup of this country and the makeup of, uh, of its people. There was even a talk about Homo Sovieticus being a, a new stage of human evolution. And we all know how it turned out. Many scientists I talked to believe that that was because of um, a gap between 
scientific development and the ability of human society, its moral norms, its ethics to catch up with it, is that still a challenge today, the, the gap between science and morality or ethics? The Soviet system spectacularly failed in my own field of biology. The Lysenko episode is one of the most disgraceful episodes in the history of science, when politics, Stalinist politics, was allowed to override respectable, decent science, and many decent Russian geneticists were exiled or even killed uh, because they didn't be believe in the crackpot theories that Stalin was as, um, upholding. Stalin was not a friend of science. But I'm asking you not so much about the past as about the present, because on the one hand, we live in an age when, you know, the scientific knowledge is generated and applied at a faster pace than ever before. But on the other hand, we see some human behavior, uh, especially in the Middle East, that we haven't seen in the last, let's say, a couple of decades, maybe even centuries. Do you think it's safe to have things like Large Hadron Collider on the planet that still practices decapitations for religious reasons? Sorry, Large Hadron Collider? When you have atomic bombs, when you have a Collider, when you have many other infrastructure that is clearly, uh, that could be dangerous if you have fa fanatics who want to cause damage and who would uh, kill people for religious peop uh, reasons in large numbers, don't you think that the existence, the coexistence of such infrastructure together with the kind of religious beliefs that we see expanding around the world, is it, doesn't that well, create a dangerous combination? Let's leave out the Large Hadron Collider. Okay. I mean, I take it you're talking about... Well, let's talk about... Nuclear let's, weapons. Well, nuclear weapons, nuclear for weapons. example. If nuclear weapons were to get into the hands of is Islamic fanatics, that would be, of course, extremely dangerous. It's very dangerous that, that Pakistan has nuclear weapons. Um, and I'm deeply disturbed by the thought that people who, for religious reasons, want to die I mean, the whole point about nuclear deterrence is that you don't want to die. I mean, you don't want to... But, but they actually want the Earth to end in a calamity. So we do not want um, Islamists to get hold of nuclear weapons. We don't want Islamists at all. I mean, it would be much better if the world didn't, didn't have any. But it's not only about... Um terrorists or religious terrorists. I know that you are not a big fan of uh, Donald Trump. You recently compared him... Is anybody? Well, there are some people... Well, he was elected president of the United States, he, so he, some people obviously... By a minority of the electorate, by the way. Well, but that minority but still counts millions of people. their ridiculous electoral college system. Well, but Mr. Dawkins, uh, whether or not you like the American political system, I think it's evident that a lot of people still support him. They, they voted in favor. In ignorant, uneducated people for the most part. Regardless of that, but uh, this, I, I know that you yourself uh, on your Twitter account compared him to uh, a little ADHD boy and you said that the system that delivered such a president clearly needs to be reformed. Don't you think that, again, the presence of, uh, uh, let's say, nuclear weapons or any other major scientific developments and the ability of them being controlled by a person like, for example, Trump, creates a major liability for Deeply humanity. Deeply worrying that, that a man, a, a, a more a juvenile delinquent, you could almost call him, has his finger on the nuclear button. That is a very disturbing fact. That comparison of Trump to ADHD boy, I thought was very characteristic of you because you managed to upset not only Trump's uh, supporters, but also parents of uh, children with uh, ADHD diagnosis. And I saw that many of them wrote to you on Twitter saying that uh, people with neurological conditions or short attention spans can still be productive and successful members of society. You don't can't say anything without offending somebody these days. No, but don't you think they, they have a point here that uh, surely he's not like you, he's not an intellectual, he doesn't pretend to be, but uh, that doesn't necessarily make him unqualified as a president. He's obviously unqualified I and mean, he's a, a vain, vainglorious, self-obsessed, narcissistic, ignorant man. So what? So what? So, so something's gone wrong with a system that can, out of 300 million people, that he should rise to the top suggests there's something seriously wrong with the system. But, you know, I'm asking you because I think it's actually a very interesting um, philosophical question because we often talk about income inequality, but I also think that there is intellectual inequality. Some people clearly more talented, more skilled at uh, mental work than or public speaking than others, but 
we welcome diversity in most professions. Why not in the top office? We do not welcome diversity of ability in doctoring, in uh, driving, I mean, trains, planes, ships. You want somebody qualified. You want somebody who knows how to do the job. If you're going to have an operation, you want a highly qualified surgeon. You don't want diversity among surgeons. But the, or... the, the job of the president is different because you, you do train them to, to be a surgeon or to be a pilot, but nothing can prepare you to be a president. Why not? Why not, why not be trained to be a president? Why not have a system that chooses people who are qualified in politics, in economics, in history, in judgment? But, you know, I'll give you an example of, let's say, Barack Obama, who was as you know, bona fide intellectual as it can be, but uh, many people in Washington believe that he suffered from an opposite malaise, you know, processing too much information at the expense of efficient decision making. So, again, don't you think that Trump may bring something different to that office? Barack Obama was less successful as a president because he was up against a Congress that wouldn't let him do anything, probably for racist reasons. But the same with Trump. I mean, that he also has a Congress that is not... He's got a Republican Congress. He's got both houses of Congress. He's got the Supreme Court. He still can't get anything done. Well, because uh, there are lots of powerful forces that are quite predisposed against him. Even his own party is now realizing that, that, that he's incompetent. But, uh, you know, life is... I will try to sort of apply your own theories to this argument because life is uh, an experiment. Uh, you know, human institutions are built through trials and tribulations. And um, as much as you may not like Mr. Trump, don't you think that, um, you know, having somebody like him may be beneficial for are the Are you seriously advocating Donald Trump? No, I don't I... believe it. You're just being prov provocative. I'm being provocative, but I think I'm being pro provocative for, for a good reason, because... Uh, you I know, cannot I... believe that you are seriously saying that Donald Trump could possibly be a good thing. You don't believe that, no. do you? Well, uh, my argument is that when it comes to politics, there seems to be a very dogmatic idea about how a person should behave, what he should think, how he, he or she should talk, in order to look presidential. Even if you don't like him on a personal level, don't you think that, uh, you know, it would be a good idea of thinking about him as a gene mutation that can give a new impulse to the already ossified political organism. It's, it's no. clear that the, the, the system needs to be reformed. You yourself I do not that. think so, and nor do you. Why not? But, I mean, how else could you upset the system that is very rigid in the way it uh, operates? You would not wish to upset the system by electing somebody incompetent, ignorant, and clearly not, not fitted for the but job. But isn't that what evolution is all about? No. Introducing uh, a mutation no, that no, is no, not... No, no. Come on, stop this. You're, you're talking nonsense, if I, if I may say so. Why? Um, you, you do not wish to really advocate a change in human affairs by saying what we need is mutation in any direction in the hope that it'll somehow be better. That's not the way we run human affairs. But hu human institutions are also, you know, also operate by the same rules, by the same system, by the same rules as all other human organisms. Is it not the case? You are not going to run human affairs in, da in a Darwinian way. I've spent my whole life arguing against that. Well, uh, you spent your whole life arguing that uh, religion has an evolutionary purpose. So I assume yes. that politics is also... That's a, different, that's a totally different question. I'm asked the question, what is the evolutionary significance of religion? Why do people's brains have a tendency to be, to be religious? It's very different from saying that religion is a benefit, is a good thing, and I'm, I would not dream of suggesting that we should run our political affairs on Darwinian lines. But Mr. Dawkins, uh, in all seriousness, how do you think uh, this system that is very rigid and very hostile to any kind of change, how else could it be, could it be changed? Are you telling me that you're advocating I'm Donald Trump? I'm not advocating, Trump? but... Yes, you are. No. I mean, you're, you're either that or you're just trying to provoke me. I... You're taking a deliberately contrary position, which is clearly opposite from what you feel. You're an intelligent person. You do not advocate Donald Trump. Well, Mr. Dawkins, we have to take a very short break now, but we will be back in just a few moments. Stay tuned. Красота. Русия, мол. Нормы. 
país magnífico para visitar. Que é espetacular. A Rússia é muito bonita. Me gostou a Rússia. Como se estivéssemos estuviera, em casa. Magnífico. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. It's a place with a lot of Sights and scenery to see. Russian people, they're really nice and friendly. And they make the foreigners feel welcome. And Russia is oh. very interesting. Oh. Very good. Good food. Very good. 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 Fantastic. <laughs> very enjoyable place to be in. Full of very friendly people. Russia is my second country. La Russie is the grand pays du monde. It's an amazing place, it's an amazing country. It's a beautiful country. Russia is awesome. And they're very nice people. We're very welcome here. And we're very glad that the Confederation is coming here. Muchas gracias. Rusia. Kaiser's Financial Survival Guide. When customers go by, you reduce the price. Didn't help? Well, reduce it lower. That's undercutting. But what's good for food market is not good for the global economy. Six years ago, the whole Haryali was in the jail. People were living in the house. People were living here. And now, the... अभी बारे में जो देख रहे हैं वही हकीकत है। Around 700,000 families will have to be evacuated today or tomorrow. So some of them they have also got to be thrown away. याग भी चल रहा है, याग लगा हुआ है, चलते-चलते पैर भी धस गया, तो वो तो पैर आग जहाँ जगह तो नीचे चल जाएगा, तो जलिए जाएगा पैर, वो भी जल जाता है पैर वो। Coal is the the target. Everybody wants coal. And the people here, living here, are treated just like old birds. Welcome back to Worlds Apart with evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins. Mr. Dawkins, uh, we talked about Donald Trump and the messy state of American politics. How does Britain compare to that? Well, I'm, I'm vocal on British affairs because I think that it was a wrong decision of David Cameron to call a referendum on something as complicated as leaving the European Union. I do, it's another of those cases where, as I was saying earlier about having a surgeon who knows his job or having a pilot who knows how to fly a plane, um, the, the decision on leaving Europe is a very, very complicated political and economic decision. And it's the kind of thing where we need parliamentary democracy, which we have, uh, and it was an entirely wrong decision to hand that, that matter over to a, a, a general public which was not qualified to take that decision, especially in the way it was presented. You are known for criticizing people um, who hold on to their beliefs despite the evidence to the country. But I think uh, British politics has produced a whole class of politicians whose views you cannot really pin down. I mean, they may be for Brexit one day, they may be against Brexit another day, and so on and so forth. On balance, who do you find more disagreeable, people who are very rigid in their beliefs or people who are totally promiscuous in their beliefs? I'm not sure I'd use the word promiscuous or rigid, I think I'm, I, I respect people who change their mind when the evidence demands it. And so a politician who is capable of saying I was wrong, it, it, I think should command respect, of saying I, I, I was wrong, I didn't look the up, perhaps new evidence has come to light, but something of that sort. we didn't hear that, neither from, I think, David Cameron nor from any other politicians who endorsed No, we didn't. It's about time we did. 
Why do you think it, why do you think that decision was put on the table? What the, the, the David Cameron's decision? Do you think it was motivated by personal? Well, uh, no. I mean, I think I think David Cameron was so convinced that he would win that 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 the, the British people would reject Brexit that he felt justified in taking the gamble, and and I think that was an irresponsible gamble. I think he was playing Russian roulette with with the British future because it's an it's an irrevocable change. It's not like an ordinary election where five years later you can you can vote the reverse. And yeah. as such, perhaps it should have been at very least a two-thirds majority, not a 50% majority. I know that you voted uh, remain in the Brexit vote, even though you argued that like the majority of the electorate, you weren't qualified to deliver an opinion in the first place. You actually suggested that no one was unless they had a PhD in economics. Isn't that true about any... Uh, political choice, well, any direct It sort of is, and that's why we have a representative democracy, a parliamentary democracy, rather than a plebiscite democracy. You elect members of parliament who, whatever their qualifications, at least are paid to devote their time to studying the details and voting on bills, having looked at all the details. The electorate as a whole hasn't time, I and mean, they're busy being whatever they are, farmers or doctors or, 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 or street sweepers. But do you, don't you think that you're perhaps investing too much faith in the goodwill and um, professional qualities of uh, the members of parliament? Well, I'm not speaking about the British parliament yeah, per se, but no, in general. Obviously, to some extent, I, I am, and not, not all members of parliament are, are particularly qualified. But, but I think it's probably fair to say that they're better qualified than the average person in the, in the street. Now, um, you spoke in favor of a second referendum. What makes you believe that the voters would be more rational oh, or indeed more qualified I, 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 I to do, I, that? I, I don't know, but, but, but I think that uh, after a year, and maybe after two years, when the terms of the, of the negotiations become clearer, uh, people might well change their mind. They might realize, I mean, certainly a lot of people, the day after the, the vote said, oh dear, I never thought that would happen. I, I was only voting because I wanted to give David Cameron a kick. If you looked at the opinion polls, they're fluctuating up and down all the time. You have, to, you have a, a definitive vote, a 50% majority, which is going to affect the rest of the, of the country for a very rest of time and rest of history. Um, and it just happens to be on the very day when the, when the population Well, but that's struck. what the politics uh, in many Western countries is all about. That's how Donald Trump at the end was I know, but then too. you get another chance four years or, f or five years later. This, this is an irrevocable decision. Now, whether or not there is a second referendum, um, it seems that both the British and the European officials are effectively dragging their feet when it comes to negotiating the terms of, of the exit. Um, given your understanding of British politics, do you think politicians still have a chance of sabotaging that, wo that vote? And do you think, would you encourage them to sabotage that decision? Well, I think there is a possibility of that. Um, I think that that as the negotiations get, m get more and more underway, people will realize how formidably complicated it is. And they will realize that the consequences of this fleeting vote on one day, June the 24th, 2016, uh, the consequences of this are so complicated that it, that it might be worth taking a, a second look. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your argument has been that uh, Brexit is primarily about economics. I mean, it's so complicated that it's difficult for people to Co comprehend all the economic consequences, but when it comes to ignoring plebiscite, it's it's a political decision. It's about perhaps undermining people's faith in politics and you know exercise of democracy. Is it worth ignoring that vote or overcoming, overriding that vote for the sake of some economic issues? If you must have a referendum, you could have a referendum on some simple issue like say fox hunting. But to have a referendum on something as complicated as, as Brexit seems to me to be an act of irresponsible folly. Uh, can I ask you one more question on that? Because in one of your articles, uh, you said that the single most shocking message conveyed during the Brexit referendum campaign was don't trust experts. And it's very interesting to me because um, when it comes to religion, uh, to, to religion, you always argue against argument from authority. And, you know, believing in experts is ultimately an argument uh, from no, authority. There's a very important distinction here. I am a biologist. I don't know about physics. So to the extent that I um, accept the findings of physicists, I'm, I'm accepting the views of experts. I'm not accepting them because they're, because they're authorities. I'm accepting it because I have faith in the, the methods that are used in, by physicists. 
And I trust that although I am personally not qualified to understand modern physics, I am qualified as a scientist to know that, the, that these methods are in place to make sure Absolutely, that... Absolutely, but politics is not precise science, no, so the experts you hear on television... It's, 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 it's less strong in the case of politics, but, um, I, but in the case of just simply complicated affairs, to, to, to make a vote when you have not looked at it at all, at least the people who are, who are involved in Parliament, the people involved in negotiation, the people in Brussels, these are people who know a lot about what, what goes on. So I, I don't regard it as an argument from authority. I regard it as an argument from people who have spent time and effort uh, to understanding, to, to, to working on the details. But who may also have vested interest in uh, continuing they may, with this status quo. They may, well. but we, it, the, the system is imperfect. But the system of representative democracy, the system of civil servants who are paid to, to look at the details in, in great detail, I have more faith in that than I have in the person on the street. Now, I, I've been a very big fan of yours over the years, but I noticed recently that you've become far more political, um, I think, than before. You previously spoke more about religion. Now I think you spoke both about religion and about politics. Do you think politics has finally become sort of a new religion for people, something that energizes I'm them a lot? I'm not sure I'd say that. Um, I, 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 became a, I became concerned about Brexit, really because the reason I've, I've said I don't think there should have been a referendum. I'm concerned about American politics. I've long been concerned about American politics, actually. I don't think there's anything particularly new in my interest in, in politics, but I, I do know when I, do, when I don't know. I mean, people have been asking me in Russia about, about developments in Russia, and I simply say, I don't know. I think when you compare the amount of discord, uh, hatred, and sometimes violence that politics generates, it can be compared to religion. In your own country, you I had a, can, an yeah. a MP I assassinated for political I, reasons. Yeah. Don't you think that that may make religion a sort of outdated target for rationalists like yourself? Don't you think that it is perhaps extremism and intolerance that you are actually after rather than, let's yeah. say, religious beliefs? That's a good point. I mean, and, and actually, uh, if you think about the, the, the great wars of the 20th century, they were not about religion, they were about nationalism. And, and um, uh, in the case of Hitler, um, racism. Tribal loyalties, perhaps, at manifesting themselves in, in political um, discourse is, is a very, very serious source of violent discord. Now, uh, there is a lot of talk these days about around the world about the need to reform schools from being a place where people acquire knowledge to being a place where people learn how to think, how yeah. to do the mental work. Since you've been doing that most of your adult life, I wonder how students could be taught to enjoy and excel at, at an intellectual labor, because I think many people do have this perception that physics, chemistry, other sciences are simply too Labor is too complicated, too yeah. difficult to... Well, they are hard, there's no doubt about it. Biology is less hard, and, and that, that's my subject. I, I confess to not understanding most of modern physics, and, and I, I wish I did. Um, but is it a skill that you can develop, I guess, the, the mental capacity? Is it something that you can train as a muscle? Do you get well, better? Uh, yes, to some extent. I mean, it, in, in the case of physics, it, a lot of it's mathematics, and, and, and you, can, you can be trained to, to learn mathematics. Um, I think what I think about science is that, is that it's hard but worth it. I, I sometimes deplore the tendency to promote science as, as fun, as sort of whiz-bangs and, and things like that. And, you think and, it has to be difficult? No well, pain, no gain? I think it is difficult, and, and I think that it's, that it's worth trying to, to master it. I know that you recently spoke in favor of um, introducing uh, the study of religion as part of uh, the school curriculum, and I think it's a very very hotly debated the subject in this country, not only uh, about what should be taught, but who should teach it, uh, more specifically whether it is believers or non-believers who, who have to teach religion. Do you have any opinion on that? Yes, I think the important thing is to teach about religion, not to indoctrinate with religion. So a child should be taught there are lots of religions in the world and this is what they believe and this is the history of them and the history of, the, of, of how they've... Um, interacting with each other, how, how they fight each other. It's important that people should learn about religion, 
what is truly wicked is teaching children, you belong to this religion. Arguably, some countries uh, disagree with you because the authorities in Turkey just the other day announced that they are, not, they are going to take evolution off the school curriculum. And their explanation for that is that the study of evolution is too complex, too controversial, too difficult for students to comprehend. Well, it's not controversial and it's not that difficult. I'm absolutely sure you, you strongly disagree with that, but what do you make of, of the fact that uh, the study of evolution is once again up for discussion, even in a relatively uh, modern country like Turkey. Any country that seriously thinks that religion is controversial and therefore should be taken off the curriculum should evolution. not. Evolution. Sorry, re evolution should not be should be taken off the curriculum is not uh, shouldn't be taken seriously as a modern country. Well, Mr. Dawkins, it's always a delight talking to you. Thank you very much for being here. And to our viewers, please share your comments on our Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube pages. And I hope to see you again, same place, same time, here on Worlds Apart.